Hello everyone, and welcome to my tier list for the top 5 insect glaives in Monster Hunter World. Before we begin with the tier list, I like to offer tips on improving your damage output with the weapon in general, because it's not enough to simply know which insect glaive does the most damage, you should also know what you're meant to be doing with it as well. Let's start by talking about the moveset. Tip number one, aerial attacks are really what makes the insect glaive stand out from the other weapon classes. You can jump over certain attacks, you can mid-air dodge to really outspace the monster or even a chase monster, but aerial attacks are dealing less damage than ground attacks in the insect glaive moveset. However, don't let this stop you from trying aerial attacks out on monsters like Arch Tempers and Ajiva, since aerial attacks are really going to wreck him and trivialize the fight. You, you pretty much you jump over all of his moves. They're also not bad against Arch Tempered Lunastra. It's not. Well, here's the deal with Arch Tempered Lunastra. She has terrible hit zone values for sever damage on most of her body, but when you get up to the wings, she actually has good hit zone values, and your aerial attacks are able to reach her wings where the other sever weapons they can't. They would have to wait for her to be like knocked over. Finally, I'd also point out that the Ancient Leshen, who has his best hit zones on his head, what you can do is if you're using certain weapons, you can chase him down with aerial attacks, and as he's teleporting around, you just kind of jump toward him. What's interesting about aerial attacks is that they have utility. When I go in to test a weapon moveset using frame by frame tests in the training room, what I've noticed is that movesets that give you extra defense or maneuverability or some other kind of utility like flourish on the hunting horn, whenever this is the case that you're having extra utility, you're going to lose damage on that move. And that's exactly what's going on with the aerial attacks. Aerials allow you to ignore a lot of different monster attacks, especially ones that have kind of like a low hitbox. And some of them are very dangerous. It also allows you to deal mount damage to the monster at the same time, and it chases. So when you're told that you shouldn't use aerials, I just disagree with this. You should definitely use aerials, but be sure that you can reach 100% affinity if you're going to be doing this. Use an elemental Kiar insect glaive with the dragon armor set, and then it's just going to be okay. It's still not going to be as much as the ground attacks, but it's going to be okay. Occasionally, you'll see a speedrunner use like one aerial attack to jump over a monster's attack rather than trying to outspace it or to iframe dodge through it. And for fighting Arch Tempered Cult to Roth, it's nice being able to build mount damage during stage 4. Be careful not to do it in stages 1, 2, and 3. You never want to mount in stages 1, 2, and 3, but mount her in stage 4. Same with the Ancient Leshen, who's actually pretty easy to punish when he's mounted by a hunter. What you do is you know, you'll get him to the stage where you're ready to do your finishing attack, and then you just kind of wait, you delay the finishing attack until your window of time to use it is kind of running out. Tip number two. From the ground, I did do some frame testing and found this combination to do the most damage. On Xbox, the button is going to be YYYB, right trigger. On PlayStation, that would translate to triangle, 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 circle, right trigger. Right trigger at the end of the combo is able to cancel recovery frames and mark your target so that your kinsec comes out and does a little extra damage. This combination is what you see speedrunners using. You'll also see them use a variation of it where they're going YY, BB, right trigger, or that would be triangle, triangle, circle, circle, right trigger, which does nearly the same damage as the first combination. You also see speedrunners actually controlling the Kinsect for bits of damage while they reposition. So if the monster is too far away from you, you'll see them, the bug will be out, and they'll, they'll have the bug smack the monster a few times as they approach. So that's all about the moveset. Let's talk about how you should be thinking about build meta. Tip number three, before the Kiar weapons came out, preference was given to raw damage insect glaives, and what you did was you used Master's Touch, right? That's what everyone does. And this meant Draken Armor or the Teostra Gamma Armor. Now you'll want to have 100% Affinity, Crit Boost 3, and White Sharpness. After the QR weapon came out, similar to the Lance weapon class, Insect Glaives started having better matchups using the new elemental options, and the builds basically remained the same with Master's Touch. So really the build meta is that combination of 100% Affinity, Crit Boost 3, White Sharpness, and Master's Touch. Uh, there is one thing I want to point out for people who are interested in maybe using an aerial damage build, don't bring Maximum Might. Maximum Might works from the ground, doesn't work from the air because your air attacks cost stamina. So I've watched a lot of speedrunners and they never finish the power prolonger skill. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. As you might already know, the way an insect glaive works is that you need to get your kinsect extracts by targeting specific parts of the monster's body with your kinsect. These extracts are needed to improve your moveset and damage. In particular, the red and white buff, well, 
What the speedrunners are doing is they're picking up the red and white buff at the start, then they hold on to these until it's almost time for those buffs to expire. You can actually see them flashing as they get close to expiring, at which point the speedrunner will then pick up the orange buff and the timer for all three buffs reset. So this is the technique you'll use rather than spending your medium decoration slots on power per longer. If you have additional medium decoration slots left over, you'll typically build agitator or peak performance. And finally, we should talk about the actual Kinsec bugs that you should be using. So tip number four, the one you see most experts using is the Pseudocat. I don't know if I said the name right there, because the most valuable stat on a Kinsect is speed, and that particular Kinsect has a lot of speed. And this means you'll see a lot of speedrunners actually use the Pseudocath rather than the true Dragon Soul. You'll even see them prefer the Whisper Vest 3 over Dragon Soul for their speedruns as well. And that's just because the Whisper Vest is faster than the Dragon Soul, that actually affects how quickly your Kinsect gets its stamina back. Whisper Vest is also giving them stun damage against the target, something Pseudocath lacks. However, they seem to only make this decision if they need an extra juggle and if the monster has enough health that they'll actually meet the KO knockdown threshold before killing the target, otherwise preference goes back to the pseudo cat 3 for its higher damage. There's also some niche cases, like if you're trying to work on paralyzing your target in multiplayer, there's also the Can Catamon 3, which looks a little bit like a bee, and you can pair this with the Paralysis Glaive so that both your Kinsect and your weapon are dealing paralysis. And finally, there's the Carnish Beetle 3 for poison, which I've seen just one speedrunner use to keep Kushala to Aura poisoned, and I thought that was pretty clever, and realized this trick also works on Arch-Tempered Zenajiva, and I know that because I tried it out. And oh, I almost forgot this one. Someone mentioned to me you could also consider using Fire Element on your Kinsect to heat up the armor on Lavasiath. So if you're doing like a Lavasiath speedrun, you might use a Kinsect with fire damage. Okay, that wraps up the tips for getting more damage out of your Insect Glaives. Now let's move on to talking about the top 5 tier list and associated builds. For this tier list, the rankings of these Insect Glaives don't matter quite as much. I mean, they matter a little bit, but it's all about the matchup. So the correct way to think about these weapons is to see them as best place in their own category. The first thing we're going to do is identify the best raw damage Insect Glaive, because if we can understand those, then we can compare them to our new Kiar Elemental Insect Glaive options. I'm going to give Kiar Glaive Paralysis and the Diablos Insect Glaive, an honorable mention as raw weapons. Kiar Glaive Paralysis is best when you're on a team of four players fighting a monster where it doesn't matter if you control when the monster becomes paralyzed. However, when you're fighting the majority of endgame monsters, you really do want a time when they become crowd controlled. Typically, it's because the fight is more difficult in a certain stage of the fight. So it turns out that I don't recommend using this weapon against the Behemoth, the Ancient Leshen, or Arch Tempered Kulftaroth, or even versus Arch Tempered Zenajiva when you're just so much better off if you go with an elemental damage insect glaive, because in that case you would be able to fight him with your aerials the whole time. But versus maybe like trash monsters, tier 2, tier 1, even the elder dragons, on a team this insect glaive is terrific, arguably even your best raw option just because all, you know, the whole team is going to take advantage of that paralysis. I've heard some arguments for this insect glaive solo that go something like this. During a paralysis, you're able to get your best combo and place off on the target, but I just feel like that's not as valuable as you think it is considering most speedrunners just repeat their speedruns over and over again till they have a perfect run, and it would be better if this insect glaive simply had a higher raw damage option or a secondary damage source like some of the other insect glaives on this list rather than an ailment. Then there's the Diablos Insect Glaive, which comes very close to being the strongest draw option. However, it has problems with maintaining white sharpness if you don't use a double affinity augmentation on it. And that means giving up the health regen augmentation. And when we're comparing it to the Devil Joe Insect Glaive, Devil Joe Insect Glaive can go one affinity, one attack augmentation. So the comparison, well, it, it came out this way. When, when compared to the Devil Joe Insect Glaive, you could see that the Diablos Insect Glaive was winning in terms of damage during a heavy attack but it was only by a small margin, and then when it came to the light attacks, those are the fast attacks, Devil Joe was actually outperforming it doing more damage thanks to his dragon elemental damage, right, the secondary damage type. And the thing about Insect Glaives is that most of the in-place optimal damage combo consists of light attacks, it's Y, 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 B. The B is the heavy attack, so there's just one heavy attack at the end of the combo. 
Okay, then we have the two strongest raw damage insect glaives in the game. These are my choices. I'm putting them in third and second place on our tier list. We have the Devil Joe insect glaive called Grunge Storm, as well as Lunastra's Empress Ruin insect glaive. If you're stuck trying to pick between these two raw options, check the hit zone values on the monster to see if they have a weakness to blast or a weakness to dragon. When that monster has a high weakness to dragon, I would choose the Devil Joe Insect Glaive. When it has a medium to high weakness to blast, I would go with the Ruin. I want to warn you, be careful not to underestimate blast damage. Even if Grunge Storm is doing more damage per hit, triggering a blast three times throughout the fight is going to catch Empress Ruin right up to it and arguably past it depending on what you're fighting. Really, because think about it, blast is just straight damage. Okay, so when you see the blast ailment, you have to think of it as straight damage. If you're curious why I give second place to the Ruin Insect Glaive rather than Grunge Storm, it's because it had considerably better build flexibility than the Devil Joe Insect Glaive, and build flexibility is a big deal to me, because the truth is, most of the time, I don't make builds like a speedrunner where every slot is dedicated to damage output. For a lot of end game fights, I at least recommend building for vitality, and Empress Cane Ruin can do this easily, while maintaining Master's Touch, whereas on the Devil Joe Insect Glaive, this becomes much harder to do. You're also getting Haste and Recovery on the Ruin Insect Glaive, which means you could possibly augment it for damage, rather than for health recovery, and this is just another way I feel that it's outplaying the Devil Joe Lance in certain matchups. I do also want to point out that the Grunge Storm is a great choice for beginners who want to fight Kulv Taroth with an Insect Glaive. Here's a non-QR weapon build that gives you critical element. If you're looking for more counter builds to use against Kulv Taroth, don't forget to check out my full guide, which I'll leave a link to in the comment section. Okay, so we're done talking about the best raw damage insect glaives, now we need to compare these to the new Kiara weapons to really understand what the insect glaive meta is. In 5th and 4th place we have the Kiara Spark and the Kiara Ice insect glaives. These are going to be your best options for fighting Arch Tempered Kulv Taroth, of course. QR Ice is basically tying with the Grunge Storm in terms of damage. I took out two completely optimized builds against Arch Tempered Kulv Taroth in Stage 4. They were essentially dealing the same damage. The difference is that the QR Ice doesn't rely on maximum might quite as much, which means you're able to use your aerial attacks without losing quite as much of your handicraft. Not to mention, QR Ice more easily builds health boost if you're not really interested in dealing a bit more damage. Uh, the downside would be if you're trying to optimize damage, Grunge Storm doesn't rely on peak performance to hit its numbers, so you could argue that Grunge Storm is a better option if you don't want to rely on peak performance. Let's take a look at the rest of the Kiar weapons on our list. Kiar Glaive Crusher is a blast weapon and is bad, though it could be fun to see four players using it on a monster weak to blast. Kiar Glaive Decay is the new Dragon Damage Insect Glaive, and watch this, it's actually going to outdamage both the Truge Bulg and the Grunge Storm when tested out on the training room pole. Of course, you need to have peak performance equipped in order to do this, but it's also worth pointing out that the training pole doesn't have the best hit zones for elemental damage, so we can assume this is now your best option for fighting monsters with a strong weakness to dragon damage, because that's kind of what it's doing. It has a very high elemental damage threshold. Because of this, we have to give it a spot on the list. I'm going to put Kiar Glaive Decay in sixth place. It doesn't quite have the universal usefulness of the Grunge Storm, but it's going to be optimal versus monsters with good dragon damage hit zones. It's also really good at aerial damage. Kiar Glaive King is the new fire damage insect glaive, and similar to the Kiar Glaive Decay, is also out damaging the Grunge Storm when tested on the training pole, though not by quite as much as slightly smaller, which means if you're fighting a monster with good hit zones for fire damage, go ahead and take this weapon out and test it on that monster, and then go test the Devil Joe 
Insect Glaive, right? So we're going to go ahead and place the Kiara Glaive King into 7th place. Remember, it's not just about how much damage a weapon does. That's only one half of the equation. It's about the hit zones on an individual monster as well. So even in the earlier comparison between Grunge Storm and Kiara Decay, there could be a monster that is weak to dragon damage, so you would assume Kiara Decay is your top choice, right? But it may also have a larger weakness to sever damage. That's going to be raw damage. So in that case, the Grunge Storm would still outperform the Kiara Decay. You have to go out and test these things to really see which one it's going to be, okay? Finally, coming in first place, we have the Kiara Glaive Water. Although honestly, it's not taking that spot by a wide margin. Really like all of the other elemental insect glaives that we've gone through, you're choosing this one when the monster you're fighting has a weakness to water damage. It's also worth pointing out that on this particular build, yes, you are reaching slightly higher effective damage output. However, you're also giving up the use of the super efficient Dragon Coil. Dragon Coil is especially good for insect glaives because with the Draken Coil, you're basically getting a free level of power prolonger along with everything else. And I like to say that, well, I think experts like to say that the insect glaive doesn't need power prolonger, but hey, it does actually kind of help. It might actually affect a little bit of your damage output as you're resetting your extracts. So when you remove the Kushala de Aura coil from the build, you're stuck in a situation where the, the skills have to be rearranged so that the Kiar Glaive Water is performing about as well as the other Insect Glaives. So like I said, near the start of the tier list, treat each of these Insect Glaives as best for their particular matchups. And when a monster isn't weak to water, of course you're not going to be using the Kiar Water Insect Glaive. But remember, you can always reliably reach for the Grunge Storm or the Emperor's Ruin Glaive thanks to their high raw damage. All right, that's the end of my tier list. Let me know if you agree with my assessments and my choices. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.